goes on to say, as they talked and discussed these things, Jesus himself suddenly came and began walking with them. But God kept them from recognizing him. I, I can't imagine what that would have been like, but as far as they're concerned, they're taking their walk. They're walking seven miles. They had to wait till Sunday. They're walking back to their hometown, and a stranger joins them. And I don't know how they didn't recognize him. Um, later on, you're going to see Jesus has a new body, and it's a, it's a, well, it's, it's a remarkable. It, after we die, we're going to have some remarkable bodies. It's going to make Teslas look like old Volkswagen. I mean, there are all kind of things we can do, but in this case, However he did it, God shielded them from being able to recognize this was Jesus, and it was done on purpose. He walks along with them, and he's going to ask them some question. He wants to find out what's going on with them. He wants to hear where they are because he wants them to learn something. And as you watch this and read it, this isn't, this isn't a, a, a polished um, biography of the different people that became the founders outside of Jesus of our faith. This is not one of these things that was spun to make them look great. We see their warts, their failures. We see their weakness. We see their short-sightedness. It's raw. It's real. It has every airmark of authenticity to it. They were imperfect, but they're real, and we can identify with them. So this stranger comes up to him, and he asks him, he says, what are you discussing so intently as you walk along? They stopped short, sadness written all across their faces. Then one of them, Cleopas, replied, you must be the only person in Jerusalem. And remember, there were close to two million people in Jerusalem that had come for Passover. People from all over the world had come there to celebrate. You must be the only person in Jerusalem who hasn't heard about the things that have happened here these last few days. What things, Jesus asked. We only know one of the people's names, Cleopas. Could have been the other person with his wife. Could have been another one of the followers of Jesus. Jesus had his 12 disciples. Now he only has 11 because Judas become a traitor. But there were a lot of people that followed him. Some have even said that it could be Luke who wrote this plus the history in Acts, but that he didn't want his name mentioned. All we know is Jesus says, what things? And they go on. They're shocked that this guy doesn't get it. I mean, he's been right in the area. How did he not know? But they go ahead and they said, the things that happened to Jesus, the man from Nazareth, he was a prophet who did powerful miracles. He was a mighty teacher in the eyes of God and all the people. But our leading priests and other religious leaders handed him over to be condemned to death, and they crucified him. We had hoped he was the Messiah. And this is important. We had hoped he was the Messiah who had come to rescue Israel. This all happened three days ago. Their perspective on why Jesus came is something that created all kind of issues along the way for them. They thought he was coming to be a, a political rescuer for them or an economic wonder guy or socially he was going to put things right they were going to get their nation back do you know what human nature hasn't changed we still think if I pursue God I'm going to be healthy I'll be wealthy I'll be in the catbird seat and you can buy all kind of books and you can hear podcasts and seminars about this it's just not what God said though we're trying to get him to serve us. They had all these ideas about what Jesus should do and it had crowded out the message he had given them all along. He taught that the Savior, the Messiah, was coming to rescue them, not from Rome, but from their sin. They didn't want to hear it. 